The basic document created by Stat Graphics is called a Stat Folio. I like to think of a Stat Folio as basically a project. In fact, if you look at the extension of a Stat Folio file, it's .sgp, p for project. That's what we as the developers uh, called this concept initially. It wasn't until the marketing people came along that they came up with the idea of calling it a stat folio. Whatever you call it, a stat folio contains several things. First off, it contains a link to one or more data sources. It doesn't actually contain data itself, it contains links to data. The data may be in Excel, it may be in an Oracle database, it may be in a standard stat graphics data file, whatever. The important idea here is that you can maintain your data elsewhere and whenever you load a stat folio it'll go ahead and grab the most recent data. This also allows several stat folios to share the same data so that you don't have to maintain several copies uh, of that data. Secondly, stat folios contain a definition of the uh, statistical analyses that you want to perform. For example, you may tell the Statfolio that you want to do a capability analysis. You may then give it the specification limits. All that gets saved when you save a Statfolio. And finally, if you want, you can tell the Statfolio where to publish the results. I'll be talking about that idea in a later video when I talk about StatPublish. I'm now going to show you how to create a stat folio in stat graphics. When you first come into the program, you'll have what stat graphics calls an untitled stat folio, basically an empty session. The first thing you need to do is go out and get some data. Now the data I want to analyze is in an Excel file. So I'm going to click on file on the main menu and go to open, open data source. This will pop up a little dialog box on which I'll tell the program where to go looking for data. We can look in a stack graphics data file, an external data file, that's what Excel is. Uh, we can do a query against uh, any ODBC compatible database, pull data from the clipboard, uh, whatever. I'm going to click on external data file and press OK which brings up the dialog box where I'll specify where that data is residing. Now, by default, it's set to Excel, which is what I want. So I'll just push on the button labeled Browse and tell it, there it is, that the data is in a file called Process Data. When I click Open, I'll now check. Yes, it's set to Sheet 1. That's the worksheet that contains my data. Right now it's set to read all of the rows in that worksheet. That's correct. The header is set to column names. That indicates that row one of my Excel file contains names for the columns. All that is fine, so I'll press OK, which will load the data into the Stack Graphics data sheet. The data we're looking at here is data regarding the strength of widgets that have been manufactured by some company. And the idea is what they've done is they've gone out once a day, taken a sample widget and measured its strength. What we're going to do now is we're going to do what's called a capability analysis. It turns out that there's a specification limit for strength. Strength is ideally 200 PSI. And it's required, though, to be within the range 200 plus or minus 25 PSI. Our goal will be to determine how often we make widgets outside that specification limit. Now, to do this, we'll go to SPC, pick the capability analysis procedure. This is variable data since it's measurements and it's individual's data. Observations are taken one at a time. The first thing I'll see when I pick the capability analysis for individuals is a data input dialog box. It wants to know where the data are, and they're in a column called strength, so I'll put that in the data field. I'll also indicate what the dates are corresponding to each of those observations. 
and then I'll type in the specification limits. The lower specification limit for strength of my widgets is 175. The nominal or target value is 200. The upper specification limit is 225. I'll type that in and then press OK, at which point an analysis options dialog box will appear. Now, on the process capability analysis, I can choose any one of 27 distributions to assume for my data. People often assume that data follows a normal bell-shaped curve, but I happen to know from looking at my data that my data follows a log-normal distribution. How do I know? Well, I'll show you how to pick the best distribution in a future video. I've looked at the data, though, and I have a pretty good idea that a log-normal distribution is good. All right, having done that, I'll press OK, and now I'll see a list of different tables and graphs. It's chosen by default to give me an analysis summary, capability indices, and a capability plot. I'm also going to ask for an X chart. That's basically a chart of the measurements over time, and then press OK. When I do that in analysis window, with the tables and graphs I've re requested appears. This is actually a very typical stat graphics procedure with multiple tables and graphs. Up in the upper right hand corner you'll see what's called a process capability plot. Now I'm going to double click in that pane to make it large. What you'll see here is actually a histogram of the data in the column called strength. Superimposed on top of the histogram is the best-fitting log normal distribution. Now this distribution is skewed a little bit to the right. It's not perfectly symmetric um, because it, the data uh, appear to be skewed. The taller vertical lines, incidentally, uh, are at the target value, the nominal value of 200, and then the specification limits 175 to 225. Along the right-hand side, you'll see some statistics, the fitted mean and standard deviation for that log normal distribution, and some other indices called capability indices. Now, I'll talk about all that in a later video. We're just here right now, actually, to learn how to create a typical stat folio. Okay, I'm going to double-click, put that away. They'll want to make one more change. Down in the bottom right, you'll see an X chart. This is a typical control chart, what's called a three sigma control chart, because typically it draws lines at the mean plus and minus three standard deviations. Now, since this is a log normal distribution, it's actually a little bit different. Um, it's plotting the control limits at what are called equivalent three sigma limits. And they're actually not symmetric around that center line anymore because the log normal distribution is not symmetric. Again, a topic for another video. What I am going to do here, though, is I'm going to push the right mouse button, which brings up a pop-up menu. And at the top, you'll see Pane Options. Now, Pane Options gives you a dialog box with options specific to a particular pane. In this case, I have an option to change the number of decimal points on those uh, limits to the right of my chart. I can also ask to color the zones, which I'm going to do by checking that checkbox. When I press OK, you'll now see a little bit more colorful plot. It'll draw a green section within the equivalent of the mean plus and minus 2 sigma. A yellow zone, and we call these zones, between 2 sigma and 3 sigma, and then red beyond 3 sigma. All right, I'm happy with that, so I'll put it away by double-clicking again. Okay, now I'm all set, ready to save what I've done. And to do that, I'm going to pick File again from the main menu. And now, this time, click Save and Save Statfolio. Statfolio, as I mentioned before, I have an extension of Dot SGP. They're sort of like project files. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this my first statfolio. 
when I've done that, I can then press save and it's all saved away on disk. Now let's suppose it's the next day or the next week and you want to redo the analysis. You know, perhaps you have some other process that's added data to the Excel file and you want to recalculate your capability indices. What I'm going to do for purposes of the demo is I'm going to go to the file menu and click new to begin with which will open up an untitled uh, stat folio. Get me back to uh, where I would be when I first came in the program. I'm then going to go to the file menu and select file open open stat folio. I'll scroll down now to this stat folio I saved which was called my first stat folio there it is and press open. When I do that, the program is going to go reread that Excel file, get whatever data is in that Excel file now, and recalculate the process capability indices and control charts and everything else. This is a very handy way if you have some analyses that you want to do over and over again to save them away and easily redo them.